This program is proudly sponsored by DT's Hotel, where every colour of the rainbow drinks, corner of Hyatt and Church Streets, Richmond. Welcome to this a little show that we do for you each week <laughs> called Squill here on Bed TV, which is part of Channel 31. It's your community right. station, isn't it? Love you right. It is. Let's introduce our squealers to start off with. Down on my far left hand side is the fabulous Sally Goldner. Welcome, Sally. Hi, Thanks, Sally. Are you going to get a shot? There we are. And next to her, Troy. Hi, Troy. Hey, Troy. Good to be here <laughs> back, back from the Oscars on Monday night. <laughs> That's right, right up on news desk, we have the fabulous Lauren Mullen. Oh, Mullen. Oh, yeah. Hello, Lauren. Hello. Sometime Monique looking very serious and, and, yes. and in, oh. intelligent today. <laughs> I mean that in the nicest way. Clapping. Oh, <laughs> and fabulous Peter. Hi, oh, Pete. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And today we have been joined by, oh I would God. have to say, one of the, the biggest uh, TV stars that we've actually had. TV stars, show stars, <laughs> everything really? stars, the fabulous Val Jolay. Make her welcome. <laughs> How are you? Going. Well, I mean, there's nothing that you haven't done in your <laughs> career, is there? As as far as performance goes, stage, uh, you on the road uh, around in the uh, early years touring yeah, uh, with you and Maury yes. doing the yeah. the vaudeville act, um, theatre, TV. Radio. Radio. Yeah. Oh multimedia. And now I'm here with you. Well, <laughs> and this would have to be the pivot. <laughs> <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. All right. So, um. Were you where? Where was? Where were you born? Were you born here? I was born in, in Sydney. No. Born in Sydney, and I started in show business when I was four years old. Oh. Uh, a year before I went to school, my mother <laughs> took me to dancing school. She was a dancing mother, so I had no say in it, you see. <laughs> and I've grown up being useless in, in, in any other area. I can't make a batch of scones, <laughs> <laughs> do gardening. And all that does for me is give me a headache, you see. Yeah. So uh, that's all I can why, do. Why would you need to when you can exactly. sing and dance? Oh, what, was dance your storm. what was your favourite medium? TV, radio or stage? Uh, they're all or? different skills really and all equally satisfying. I think theatre is pretty exciting because you get the immediate response from mm, the audience. Yeah. Television, you, you hope you've done it right. You're in the hands of so many people <laughs> and you want somebody to say, hey that was a great take but nobody does that. They just oh, say no. next. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and tell you when it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you when it's bad either. They, just oh, they do here. Yeah. One, oh. one more for us, they say. <laughs> How do you find the switch over between them though? For example, like you see a lot of today's stars where they might be a theatre and then they try like doing singing or they yeah. might be a singer and try doing the theatre and you just sort of think mm, you should have stuck with what you've done best whereas yes. you've been able to you know get away with all of it yes how, how did you mix all that in just pure talent <laughs> pure talent <laughs> i think it's got a lot to do with the timing for instance in this country when television came they uh, it was important that you came from theatre and, and vaudeville or mm. some form of theatre because it was a visual medium. And if you came from radio, which wasn't a visual medium, a lot of those performers weren't comfortable without a script. Mm. They were oh, great okay. performers, but uh, they mm. couldn't communicate with an audience. They've never had to. Is she holding a script? Yeah. Oh, okay. And even now you'll find a lot of people, film people, who rely on a script if they're interviewed on, they're at a loss to do something mm. live mm. because they haven't had to do it. It's a mm. different skill. But we had the advantage because we didn't have television, we only did theatre, yeah. we were able to adapt easily in those yeah. early shows of like Sunnyside Up and uh, all the early drama series that they did, Cop Shop, Division 4 oh, and all God. those, you know, <laughs> Mari and I did the whole gamut of them because yeah. we'd come from theatre and we knew how to handle props, you know, we knew how to dress a set and shut oh, up when someone yeah. else was speaking and all those <laughs> and tricks. And the fear things that we haven't learned here. <laughs> <laughs> Quite down pat, we but try. we're getting there. Yeah. Um, now, um, not long 
long ago you did This Is Your Life. I did indeed. Yeah, yeah. and that was an scary. exciting... Oh. <laughs> scary? Everybody is it as scary or is it, is it beat up or is it just no. off the pan like that and you just are surprised like that and... If somebody realises that it's going to happen to them, they cancel the whole thing. Oh, no really? matter how far they've gone with the research, they just cancel the oh, whole wow. thing, which I found out all about this later on. Wow. I was like yourselves, I had no idea. But I haven't recovered from that. No. <laughs> oh, honestly, you know, when they say, well, it happened at my son's house, and like, when I lost Murray, there was only Marty, Murray and I. We have no brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles or anything. I'm an only child. He's an only child, so... <coughs> They relied on Marty for all the information, my son. Mm. And their head office is in Sydney, and he was communicating, and he kept it to himself for six months he was doing all this. Well, he cannot six, keep anything to himself. No. I don't know That's how what I asked him. How did you keep it I don't know how secret. he did it, you know. He said to me, <laughs> Mum, I've, I've got a fellow coming round from the ABC to have lunch at my place with you next Tuesday. Keep it free. I found out later this was the Visitor Your Life thing. Really? And I said, oh, who is it from the ABC? Because if you tell one lie, I've got to tell it. Yeah. <laughs> I found out. Oh, don't worry about him. I mean, you'll know him when you see him. So, and he said, oh, by the way, wear decent shoes. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> How weird. Having lunch with my son and a foot fetish. <laughs> How weird. I thought, that was his way of telling me, you know, look, decent. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I've come out of my front gate. He's, he's there to pick me up. Unbeknownst to me, I found out later, he's mic'd. He's got a mic under his shirt <gasps> with a backpack. Oh, they have to know when I'm arriving. You oh, see, yeah, right. so they have to hear. What if you're oh. in a bad mood and you're going off a... <laughs> 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 oh, no. Well, I've like, run out of the front gate pointing at my feet. <laughs> shoes are okay. Get the car. Get oh, the no. All right, don't bustle me. <laughs> What's it like sitting there and you hear all the voiceovers and everything and then just like go, oh, that voice or something oh, like that? Oh, look, look when, you, when as soon as Mark Munro and the crew who just came from everywhere in his house saying, Val, today was your life, I know these people. Yeah, yeah. I thought, what are they doing in that? <laughs> <laughs> You know, for Murray, I could have understood it, you know, yeah. but for me, oh, know, come on, no, no, I'm not, you're selling yourself not short false, there. No, not at all. I, I'm really sincere, yeah. like, I'm sorry it never happened for you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, it would have been you, lovely. Yeah, so I think, and I think if you asked everyone in Australia who they would li most likely to like to see on This Is Your Life, I think that Murray would probably be right up there in the yeah, top five. Yeah, I know I'm he biased, is, but you know. No, he nice. did. He was very much loved. And uh, I must say, and I said to Marty too, that it was really emotional watching you on This Is, that, yeah, this is Your Life that night. Look, I was at home. I was not, there was not a dry eye in my house. If so. somebody mm. knocks on your front, uh, a policeman knocks on your door, you haven't done anything, <laughs> but you think, oh God, what have I done? Yeah. Yes. Don't you? As yeah. well, soon yeah. as I saw them, I thought, oh what, my God. Who are they going to dig up? Well, they'll dredge yeah. out those skeletons. Uh, and you'll love this one. I've got to tell you about this. The showgirls, you know, like, this is, we're talking like 50 years ago. Yeah. So they wanted to get a couple of old showgirls. Marty told me about this. Now, to find them, a couple that he knew I'd kept in touch with lived in America. They'd mar married mm. Americans during the war. Now, I don't know if they thought that these girls were going to look the same. <laughs> 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 They yeah, but they came on and nice they were... Oh, she's your mum. Wherever she is. They didn't know where, uh, where they were. Uh, uh, dear old ladies. Yeah, that was, oh, was very God, cool. what a stretch. <laughs> all right, we're going to have some more with uh, Val very shortly. <laughs> now we're going to go to the news desk. Take oh, away, dear. Lauren. Ah, good afternoon, everybody. The gay and lesbian and transgendered and allied communities has expressed its outrage at the Liberal bloc to the same-sex relationships bill. The legislation, if it becomes law would provide same-sex equality under 44 sections of Victorian law. Could this be the same Liberal government that advertised openly in, last, uh, in the last Midsummer Guide? Consideration of the bill has been delayed by the sudden illness of Attorney General Rob Hulls. Uh, before he, he fell ill, Hulls said in a statement to the media that despite claiming that they, the Liberal government, will fight for the gay community, they won't fight for them in the party room. And in other news, uh, Resurrection 2001, which I'm sure is going to be the sauciest of also gay and lesbian parties to hit the Melbourne scene yet. Yep. So, so stay tuned for that one. Promises to be the uh, naughty night of no holds barred flesh and fantasy. So I'll be there and I'm sure everyone else will as well. And back to the panel and I'll see you later in the show. That um, got your approval, did it, one yeah. 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 of yeah. You we're, two we're are turning again. into a, a little evil little thing. Yeah. Yeah. Reckoned with. What do you mean turning into? <laughs> <laughs> 
I right. love her. Peter, what cool. have you got to talk about? Um, well, I just wanted to mention, <clears throat> I think, the big news of the week. George Pell is going to Sydney. Oh. Yay! I think it's a good thing, although people do say it could be scary because even though we're losing him to, for, so he can go to Sydney, because he's going to Sydney, it actually might mean he's got more power because being the Archbishop mm. of Sydney is bigger than being of Mel the oh, one in Melbourne. Sydney, Melbourne. So, I don't know, it's a bit scary. But it's also, it, I just realised, it's not just the gay issues that we have to be worried about, the set's falling apart, but um, apparently like, he gets all these really um, regressive texts, like they're called To Know, Worship and Love. He, he told all Catholic schools that they had to have them. And even Catholic schools don't want them, but he's forcing them. He's a, allegedly, I think he's a very scary man. I thought he was a soccer player. He was a football player once, That's apparently. Pelé. Oh, it's Pelé, is it? He was a soccer player. Oh. Right. Oh, but he was a football player. player. He was oh. a football oh. player. What about the rugby <laughs> player? Was that bizarre? Which <laughs> one? The, the rugby the player. player. Very bizarre. I said to my son, what about the rugby <laughs> player? He said, Mum, everything's digital these days. That's Marty to come up with a pub slide for it. Monique? Yes, I just found I in my letterbox. Yes, in my letterbox, our strongest defence against the drug problem. Um, I haven't actually had a proper look through it, but instead of doing news articles, what, what I'm going to do is read out sort of bits that I find interesting, and we can have a quick, quick okay, ramble sure. about yeah. it. So um, I've just noticed when I've been looking through, they've actually got pictures of all the different types of drugs and, just for and those the effects kids who on them. Don't know what well, drugs I mean, no, are; they can is, see what they need. Right. To get I mean, now. this is a parent handbook to mm. sort of like. But yeah, as I said, I haven't read it, so we'll go through and um, have a look at some. More yeah. interesting yeah, things, isn't it? What, it would uh, be. The propaganda. I just think it's amazing that now we're coming into an election that all mm. these amazing mm. little things, you know, the beer mm. tax and the nothing drugs and the glossy, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing Always much anyway. Yeah. How are we going, people? We're still in there? Oh. <laughs> Has I love anyone it. They seen all do the ads yet? That a, a part of this whole big Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, whew, it, 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 it goes halfway, I think. It doesn't go mm. far enough. I was yeah. just going to say that. It's, sort of like it's there, but then it's not finished. It's not as shocking as what they said it was going to be, no. I don't think. No, I don't think yeah. so. Room to improve. Yeah, the, thing, the thing that got me about, about the booklet, I, I can't say I read every word and memorised it, but it was basically uh, that it didn't really look, tell kids about much about self-esteem and saying no. It was sort of like this anti-psychology mm. attitude. The physical yeah. side's well, looked at, but not This is how your life's going to be. Yeah. You know, you're going to be yeah. dead yeah. or a prostitute or and there's exactly. no hope. It was ho like a hopeless. There was, no, yeah. there was no way out. Yeah. I didn't see a way out there, which I, agree. Was, I thought was really yeah. interesting. All right. Now, we are only a 45-minute show today, and oh we're already past the first segment, so there you go. So now we're going to have some news from our sponsors, and uh, we will be back with um, Scott Caparo, who uh, is a bit of a controversial oh, performance oh, artist. Yeah. <laughs> Just what our careers needed. Yeah. Uh, so grab yourself a coffee, come back. This is Bent TV, Channel 31. for the second segment of Squill here on Bed TV and we have been joined by Scott Capuro. Thank you Now, um, unless you haven't <laughs> been breathing or like opening your eyes this week, you would you would know about this man and if you haven't, let's talk about what uh, <laughs> what happened this week. You appeared oh. on a commercial network. I did. I did. A <laughs> the lovely Rove McManus, who you know. But they didn't pay me oh, there either. Didn't they pay you? Really? Yeah. No. Oh, what's that? Oh, mean either. Well, yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, didn't they talk to you about that? Now? <laughs> so yeah, there's a community. But it's so fun thing. to be gay, so it's fun to be on this show. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. Yeah. And Rove isn't gay. gay. He's not gay. He's no. Gay. Well, well, yeah. Uh, well, he told us about 20 times on Mardi Gras the night that he did that. So we sort of that means he's gay, right? Because well, that's what I thought. Because crazy people don't run around going, "I'm crazy." They're just crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 He did used to always mention how cute his butt is, and I think that's a gay sort of thing to worry folks yeah, on your butt all the time. It was weird because when he was sucking me off backstage, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you look really gay right now. But I guess it's <laughs> 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 to the sense. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's anyway. Glass. Oh. All right. His teeth are nice, though. <laughs> but you could buy those too, just like he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pull right out. And that's how he got the job. <laughs> Gummy. Yeah. Um, all right. So, oh. what apart from upsetting? <laughs> I just don't like being criticized by a second-rate comic on a third-rate show. But uh, thank you. Yeah. You know, I was the funniest thing on that show. They should praise me, not scorn me. Yeah. Totally. I got them so much press for again a third-rate show. Oh, absolutely. Well, you you know, know, I mean, they couldn't buy that publicity. What did you do to make them upset? I talked about eroticizing Jesus, like I'm the first one that's ever done that. In fact, I just saw a book being um, reviewed in The Age today about a nun who gave birth in the 18th century. And the, the cover of the book has her blast in here with her nipples hanging out. And she's like, this with a little yeah. nun have it on? I thought, uh, see, I'm not the only one that does it. <laughs> and you think that I mean, if you're a gay kid in Catholic school, you're looking at a naked, sinewy guy on a cross mm -hmm. all day long, and you're thinking, come on, Jesus, suck it. You know, yeah. That's all I <laughs> And I said that on Rome. Oh, and apparently, I'm sorry, oh, Mom. Oh, Jesus, suck it is bad. Well, I think, unless you're on South Park, yes. <laughs> Have you seen the new what they think Jesus actually lo looks like now? He's fat guy with ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> we all know he's a fat guy. Uh, Religious fanatics always just sit around and <laughs> drool all over themselves. He's got big Coca-Cola stains on his teeth. <laughs> so who's the person on the cross? Dirty toenails, starfish yeah. fingers. Yeah. I know, but in the paintings, he's always looking really hot. He looks like a porn star. <laughs> Doesn't he? Well, yeah, I suppose. Look, if you're traveling through Europe, you're on a train for six hours, you get out in Rome, what are you looking at? Looking Jesus at on the cave or something, some painting in a church, and you're thinking, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> So apart from, as I said, causing controversy, what what are you here for? To to, to perform at the comedy festival, oh, I and so. they've disowned me. I they've mean, disowned yeah, you. No, banished. you're joking. I can't. Uh, I didn't too perform. At, I didn't perform at the gala last night. They banned me from the gala because they said I was too naughty. And uh, wow. 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 this is amazing. Fuck the gala. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. so it's Australian TV. Who gives a shit? Nothing personal. Oh, please. No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. We don't put ourselves in no. the same box. No. Uh, so I was. I, my, again, my feelings were hurt because I wish the, the festival had come out and said, you know, we support him and what he did and what he said, but they didn't. So I'm on my own. But the production staff that brought me over have been great. The publicity staff have been great. Yeah. And the audiences that show up have been great. I think we almost sold out last night, and they were fantastic. They were really fun. So the kind of audience I'm getting now are the kind of audience I've always wanted. Like, you know, self-hating homosexuals and straight people who have a brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like straight people who right. read for pleasure for a change. Yeah. And, and queers who are drunks and drug addicts and, and hate themselves. It's great. So when you, when you well, do you something like the comedy yeah. festival or even like Rogue, don't they know your sort of material first? Exactly. Some they they've seen the tape. They, that... they got a stack of tapes sent to them of other comics. They chose me. I was surprised too. Because I don't think of myself as a live TV stand-up comic. But they chose me, and we sent them a list of the, the three things I was going to cover. Clitoris, 16-year-old boys, and Jesus. eroticizing Jesus. And they were like, okay, fine. Well, and you would jump at it, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very marketable. And I met the guy who owns Channel 10 at the cocktail party right before I went to the taping, and I told him the Jesus joke. And he said, no, that's fine. It's after 9.30. It's fine. You can do whatever you want. So oh. I've been approved by the guy on the station, so we went along. You we know he works for Channel 7, don't you? I just found that out. Is this your first time? No, it's, it's my third. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. they yeah. must know what you do. I've done the gala twice before they do. But I just think they got a bunch of calls saying, ooh, scary, and so they had to say something. Yeah. Well, that's what well, it is, isn't it? It like, goes by that they already approved what you did, but all of a sudden some people out there have gone, I'm offended by it, they've made the call, and all of a sudden yeah, they go, oh, okay, mm -hmm. and you know. I got an applause break in a three-minute set in front of kids at the Rove show again I should be praised <laughs> yeah. the camera crew well, loved it yeah I mean yeah. if anyone it's not even the, to suffer through Rove they would know that yeah. Yeah, and so it's not even the um, riskiest part of my act I do all sorts of stuff short yeah. news week yeah well I mean that's really interesting because um, anyone that was watching last week yeah, would right. um, also have seen that we were censored here Why? last week. Oh, because oh, we had the guys yeah. from the puppetry of the penis on. Oh. They showed Have you heard about them? I've seen the show. Yeah. Well, um, we... One of them's hot. We're, we're yeah. He I'm looks like a porn star. He's totally yeah, hot. He, well, he, he was like this to me as he left. <laughs> Oh, back off. Oh, <laughs> you are so sad. You did that. Oh, you are so sad right really? now. No, I'm not really. Well, okay, watch. Don't because. Look. But me doing yeah, it means nothing to you. Yeah, but I'll be talking. Wait, see, well, you're a straight guy. Because he's you're straight. straight now. But, no, but he was asked to be with straight and he said, as far as I know. Oh, please. He's got a big one. That's why you lay it. Well, I did. I did. But he stretches it. Yeah, I like it when he turns back. Do we need to give this discussion at all? Before we get Sorry. Wait, well, we missed out on it last week. So I just had to say that, yes, we were censored, and no, I was not happy. The penis no, was censored. bad. Every, yeah, it was just but cut. But it is proof of what you do with They just cut it right got. off. It's what you do with what you got. Yeah. It's true. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, well, that's what we were saying. How can anyone have ever thought that you could make so much money and be oh, so famous my from God, the... the stretch marks. You're willing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to see what they were doing. Oh, just... 
<laughs> but that's Absolutely. what comics are supposed to do. That's there are comics and they're pushing the boundaries, and mm. that's what I do. That's our job. So that's what we do. So it's strange to be censored mm. when you come here as an invited guest to yeah. do what you yeah, want, so and then they turn around and censor you. I was just in South Africa, and they censored my material. Um, or they tried, and I did the religious stuff there too, but they censored it because they don't want religious stuff at all on stage about any religion. Mm. And I paid attention for about 24 hours and then I went back to my own material because I'm not going to be flown a 42 hour flight and then told what I can and can't do, you know? Either fire me or let me die book, mate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's that simple. All right, we're going we to go have to do that. something. He's flashing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting he's he's like with maneuvering from the back there as well, <laughs> yeah. by the looks of it. He's got Lauren. dimples. He has nice Thank dimples. He's, <laughs> he's lovely. Robert. He's flashing him right now. Take it away, Lauren. Honestly, he says. Uh, look, it's not my position to put my two cents worth in because I'm up here on, now. Yeah. But, but how many times have we had to endure comments on the footy show about butt whipping this and lesbian that? And as soon as every Christian and Catholic starts writing into the network, there's, there's this great big drama. It's the stuff we put up with every day, every week. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, moving oh, right along. And you, you, we're going to call you Eminem from now on. I like that. <laughs> Okay. All right, well, moving along. Anyway, Spunk star Mike Reed, which is the gentleman behind me, was apparently severely once reprimanded for wearing skin-tight jeans to teach at a Catholic school. And uh, Reed's role in Spunk as a 1980s rock star. Every night he pours himself into groin-embracing skin-tight satin pants and Spunk is showing at La Mama until April 8 only. Uh, the first three callers on Monday morning will get receive a double pass to go and see Spunk and it looks pretty exciting. He's a very Tuesday sexy, morning. handsome man. Tuesday morning. Monday morning. Do you want to fight me about it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and new, new figures show a 41% increase in new HIV infection in the period 1999 to 2000. More than 80% of those newly diagnosed were gay or bisexual men. Health Minister John Thwaites said the dramatic increase in HIV during 2000 highlights a complacent attitude towards HIV AIDS and its prevalence among certain sections of the population. Um, so that's not very good news for the gay and lesbian community at the moment. And that's all from me for the moment, and I'll see you next segment. Okay, well, thanks, Lauren. Lauren. All right, um, so Scott, your show st has started last night, or you didn't? <laughs> <laughs> it's another part of the joke. You're doing right? Army. Oh, right. 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 I can't re oh, no, That's the International Science for Show starting, is what that is. Is, is that <laughs> what it is? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an old vaudevillian <laughs> trick. Oh, you know that one, <laughs> that, sorry. Has started, is starting. Why are you flirting with me right now? <laughs> Am I flirting you are, with you? Desperately. Am yeah. I? Just relax. <laughs> I'm fine. Well, we can have sex. You don't have to do it's a whole show for oh, me. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> All right, so who wants to talk about it? I'm at the... Um, <laughs> I'm at the, uh, get your hand off my hand. I'm at the black box. That wasn't my hand. <laughs> wow. Black box. Wow. 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 I'm yeah. in the black box. I'm not in your black box, that's later. Yeah, but I'm sure. at the, um, I'm near your brown star. I'm at the black box. I'm at the black box every night at 8.15. The kids. I'm doing it for the kids. It, that's it. We had a 15 year old, 15 year old boy with his pee flag sponsor in the, in the audience last night. Oh, uh, that's sweet. And every time I asked him a question, like, how big is your dick? He <laughs> looked at his lap and he, I don't know. I, I, I forget. I don't know my mother. So cute. <laughs> I know it was this old guy that wanted to fist him, but it was really adorable. <laughs> but that's a good way to start. Absolutely. Break the illusions right away. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. in the deep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Who's got something to say? That's <laughs> <laughs> you, Cheryl. No one has anything to say. No one has anything to say. I'll ask Val something if I may. If you would, Sally, that would have been nice, please. Val, I mean, you've had a huge amount of experience in the world of entertainment and you've seen lots of changes. If you're a young person today wanting to break into showbiz, what's your advice to them? Uh, try and observe everything and learn what you can, uh, particularly music, because music is the basis of everything. And... Um, Get into the art side of, of show business. Learn how to put sequence on. Look, I don't know what, what we would do without the gay community in show business, honestly. <laughs> no, it's true. Have no wigs and no costumes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And no you memorial know. services either. <laughs> <laughs> memorial what services. What was that? Throw away <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah. truly, like our, our, set, our set designers, our wardrobe designers, music, uh, choreography, they're the basis of all that stuff, you know. And, and if you are going to get into show business, it's not get, getting up there and acting. It's learning, it's learning how to pull the tabs and, and, and set the props and, and strike the sets and learn really what makes it all tick. 
But I don't know where they can get, go to get that these days. Yeah. Really? Well, I know where you can go to get that. You can come and be a Bent TV member. Um, because that's what it's all about here, Val. We, um, you may have got to pull the tabs and take the prop. Yeah, you have no idea that we're actually going to make you Thanks strike afterwards much. and bump out with that's us. Let's show this. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you something, right. but I, I did uh, Neighbours recently. Yeah? Yeah, Bud Tingwell and I did a few uh, weeks in Neighbours. Neighbours has been running for 15 years in this country. Rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They said to me, uh, of course, you, uh, you, you, you've you seen the show. And I said, oh, never miss it. I'd never seen it. <laughs> doing other things. Anyway, Why does everyone say that? Well, you don't like to say you don't watch a show when you've been invited to join the well, cast. Right, because right, it, was it was an awful lie. But they expect you to know all the cast members and be familiar with the sets and everything else. But our first day was an OB outside broadcast. And, and Bud Timwell and I are supposed to be cooking fish. Uh, we've arrived back and it was boiling hot. It was in February. We were all boiling hot and it had to be real props fish because the flies came from everywhere. And we and I'm saying to Bud, the fish are in the, in the fish. He said, well, they won't see it on camera. I said, no, I know, but they've got to eat it. So I'm oh, mumbling to one of the yeah. cast members putting the fish out. <laughs> I said to young Andrew Bibby, who's one of the cast members, be careful when you eat this. I'm whispering to him because there's, there's flies in it. He said, uh, he said, don't worry, darling. It's all protein. Oh. Uh, I've said mate. that so many times. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure we've all said it before. Scott, thank you for coming in thank today. You. you know, everything I said tonight was my opinion. <laughs> yeah. 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 My opinion. Your opinion. No oh, one else was. Was. Even though we do agree with some of that. Thank you for coming in and thank good luck you. with the rest of the tour. Thanks, you and <laughs> to all those people that have a problem. Okay. okay. All right. oh. Come back and join us soon here on Bent TV. Oh, That's it. <laughs> them nails, you have a certain little cute way of flirting with them nails. They make me feel so happy. They make me feel so blue. I'm falling, no stalling, falling in a great big way. I'm traveling through this game called life. It's a Well, they're getting arty with those shots. Welcome back to this, the third and final segment of Squirrel here. Thank you. <laughs> Switching all over the place today. I'm um, Channel 31, and um, we've got lots of people behind us and around us because we've only got this little tiny space. We have been joined by Claude Not So. Yay! Woo! Welcome, Claude, otherwise known as. Claude Jane Van Dome. That's right. Also, as as exactly. well as other things. Um, primarily, you are here today to talk about something very exciting that's coming up. A squeal exclusive, Paul. It is. Oh, that's oh, really? like. it's, what a fabulous show it's been so far. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good. Show I'm today. deeply honoured to be amongst this cast. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yes, big star. And now with an exclusive. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And it is for well, coming up in the middle of this year. Correct. Um, well, there hasn't been. Now that all ceremonies, including um, you know, fancy ball, all our big dress-up, flashy events, have all become defunct. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, well, a year went past and it was quite boring. I thought, and also for the, the recognition of people that work hard behind the scenes and up front. Um, so I've created the Pride Awards. Yay! In conjunction with Pride March. So all proceeds will go to Pride March and uh, another nominated charity. Um, Trying to put integrity back into our award structure. There's been a lot of criticism in the past with awards, and um, I think that what I want to try and achieve, and people say you can't do it by yourself, we've always had committees, and I think, well, perhaps um, I'll just see what I can do. Mm. I won't put the emphasis on the money factor of what they raise, but however, I want to get it right. No vote leakage. Um, right people involved, everyone's welcome to join, um, a setup committee, a production committee and all the rest of it. So I do, and Pride March is um, very honoured. Um, if they get their, you know, little front, up some front, they can just spend the rest of the time um, being the mid-year between Pride March and, you know, mid-year event. Yeah. If I can raise them $5,000, I mean, virtually, um, they just kick start and they can spend the rest of the year and, and um, yeah, and just, you know, do wonders. Yeah, absolutely. So they're quite happy. All right. So this is the date. Absolutely, fifth yep. of June. Yeah. Which is not a long way away. So I'll be working no, around the clock for it. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, however, I have eliminated a lot of the time waste of factors. The awards won't be sold this year. Each category of the awards will not be sold. I'll be inviting all the premier ven venues and people in the industry to contribute 
their best um, asset towards the awards. Uh, for instance, um, B News S, our gay media, B News S and MCV will be donating, obviously, the gay media press. Mm -hmm. So in advertising, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to I'd like to put it back to the venues and you know to the exchange and to the Peel and to any other venue that would like to contribute a show rather than paying a thousand dollars for an award right. I think if they can put the show and all work and compete against each other yeah. that would be fantastic because it would be their interest to showcase yeah, who right. is the premier venue yeah, that's right. um, and the most ex now I think I've you've all have got a list of yeah, awards there are 24 awards I did try and cut them back I would have been happy with 10 awards but I am um, because obviously it does take time I want to make it a very sharp presentation um, so people can party after, so I'm looking at two, two and a half hours, not a yep. five hour ceremony. Mm -hmm. well, you, the thought that struck me yes. was that um, there has been concern about the transparency of the voting process, Absolutely. all that sort of thing. Absolutely. Do you have, how can people, how, how are people going to get nominated and right. how are people going to vote on it? Can you go, perhaps it's really worth going into detail on that? Absolutely, point. absolutely. Um, that has been obviously the biggest issue. Um, so this is the way I've planned it, and I'm and I'm looking for you know um, opinions on this. Um, Primus are good enough to set up a, an email site. People will be able to email. Firstly, I'm looking into a, a telephone system where people can ring up and vote. Um, ballots will be done through media, uh, so you can you know if you haven't got email, if you haven't got whatever, you can do that. All votes will be count be counted the three number in a three week period. We don't want it to drag on, we want to keep public interest up. Three nominations of each category of the 24 awards will be then advertised and people will be asked to vote on that. When I have also will set up an academy, a silent academy of reputable people in Melbourne that have worked behind the scenes for many years but still have their pulse on the industry and um, they will oversee everything. Obviously I'll like to, you know, I'll have to believe in them to, to not leak, have, have um, you know, confident potentiality to not leak anything out, but I'll try and leave that as late as the date. So the three, you, you voted for the three top favourites. When the, um, the, the votes come in for that, they'll be counted by this academy. Uh, at the closing date will be the Friday prior to the ceremony. I will then hand write the nominations and they'll be on an envelope and they will be presented on the night. Mm -hmm. Not even the trophies will be um, commissioned out to have uh, to have titles on them. And whoever wins the trophy can then come back to me in the following weeks and I'll gladly get an inscribed for them. I've tried to think, you know, and if there's any other suggestions, please, this is a community awards. Yep. Oh, right. so it's coming up on June the 5th. Well, I did want to call it the Grammys. I was in two minds about that. June the 5th this year. Um, so if anyone wants to get in contact with you, they Absolutely. can through the dome. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. All right, so um, become involved with that. Now we just before we go on, I'm very excited also, Kerry, hi Kerry Lagore, yes. she has given her seal of approval for the Kerry Lagore Appreciation Award, which is, so, fantastic. Which is purely up to herself to vote who she thinks has contributed the most to the gay community. All right, okay. wonderful. Okay, um, we'll which one am I going to win? More yeah. friendly. I don't know, Scott. <laughs> we'll have to make up one for you. I, I want think. the youngest, cutest game. We're going to go to the yeah, news desk award. now with Lauren. Take it away, Lauren. Howdy, looking forward to those awards and also the, uh, the after party, the resurrection after party at the Dome. Um, that's Easter Sunday and it's at QBH. Is it? QBH no? is, um, is the uh, resurrection party, the after yep. party at the Dome. Oh, okay, that's fantastic. Looking forward to that. Okay, uh, well, our favourite wacky Catholic, Dr George Pell, leaves <laughs> Melbourne permanently in May to become the next up Archbishop of Sydney. Amongst Pell's long list of attributes is claiming homosexuality is intrinsically disordered toward evil, supporting the formation of gay conversion groups such as Courage, and opposing the Brax government's proposed law reform for gays and lesbians, which is currently in our parliament, being debated in our parliament. And I've got a weird and wacky slip up in the, in the press and we'll make sure that that paper remains unnamed. I don't know if you can get this, but this lovely photograph of the glass house. Uh, there we go, and not far off that. I was actually at the glass house, which happens to be going very well. But it seems to look suspiciously <laughs> similar, similar to this picture at Girl Bar, which I was also at. And it's funny, <laughs> the same people. Right? It's walking around with a whole bunch of clones. <laughs> anyway, those are the slips up, slip ups, and uh, what do you think, baby? Ah, it sounds alright to me. Over to you guys. Alright, thank you there, Lauren. Um, 
Now, sorry, there's people flapping. What's going on? <laughs> yes, all right. First of all, we'd like to say a big happy birthday to the fabulous Louise Messinger. Yeah, happy birthday, Louise. Say happy birthday. Now, the, the thing is, over the next four weeks, you're probably going to hear that little phrase quite a lot because we know what month she's born in, but she won't tell us the actual date. So to safeguard it, we're just going to say it, happy birthday to her every week for the next four weeks. And I'm sure you'll appreciate that, won't you, Louise? <laughs> uh, all right. And don't forget, starting tonight... Here on Bent TV is the third and probably final, after what we've been through, series of Bitch and Kitchen that starts. Um, and we, I think we start off the first one with Kerry Lagore. And she's going to be cooking some, yes, she was very good, some fabulous salmon patties, which was very exciting. All right, now for my favourite part of the show. Here we go. It's Sally. She won't be stopped. She won't be silenced. Take Yay. it away, Sally. What, what, could, what else could it be this week, as Lauren just mentioned? The departure of George Pell to Sydney, and aren't we just shedding tear yeah. after tear <laughs> after tear? I mean, I, I dug through the Sally Goldner archive. Well, it's actually a big cardboard box. Mm -hmm. But I found the Sunday Age, December 26, 1999, where the church backs cure for gays, and it said, quote, that um, the courage, the group that in, uh, supports conversion therapy, enjoys the blessing of Archbishop George Pell. Well, in my opinion, George Pell, you are promoting psychological genocide because current conversion therapy wipes out minorities and that's what genocide is and it's torture and it's brainwashing so good riddance to go to Sydney but I want to link to something else I had the privilege on the weekend of being a judge at the minus 18 uh, baby dykes and poor talent contest and the thing is I saw how talented our young gay lesbian bisexual and transgender people are writing and choreographing their own material so much talent to offer to all the George Pells and Robert Deans of this world, you're yesterday's people and those people are tomorrow's who will make this planet a better place. So George Pell, to borrow from the words of uh, politically incorrect 70s comedian Dave Allen, goodbye and may your God go with you. I say as you go to Sydney, goodbye and take your devils with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, quickly, quickly, there's something I heard um, about Absolutely. John Travolta and there's been a um, statement made that he may be a homosexual because apparently he was making some a passes a at some guy in the sauna. Oh. I'm in this sauna, some men's club, like not a gay men's club, but yeah, apparently uh, he was, All right. put it this way, he wasn't soft and he kept making passes at some Goodness other guy. So me. It makes me wonder whether it's he just a rumour this guy started and it already says, shows how far it could go because it's got to Australia. Whether it's actually can I true. tell you a rumour? You can. Steve Brax got thrown out of a casino. Did he? Oh, oh. Truly, he, he uh, completely <laughs> misunderstood the craps table. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. There we go. All right, Val, thank you very much. And just for that last one oh, there, we've got oh. these beautiful flowers for you. Thank you so much. very much for that. Thank you. Um, Scott, thank you for coming along. You haven't said much during this little oh, segment here, have you? Oh, I thought it was your area. This but, is all your yeah, spotlights. Yeah, it's all going for yeah. it. Claude, thank but you for want coming along. Like he wants an award. Yeah. You'll yeah. have to come back in June. Oh, really? So you can do that. Oh, really? Lauren, thank you. Yeah. Sally, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Peter, yeah. Monique, and yeah. Troy, thank you once oh, again. No this is it. Sue Ridge is going to take you out tonight here on Squeal on Bed TV, Channel 31. It's your community station. Stay tuned for a lot more. And don't forget, Bitch in Kitchen. Bye. Bye. Bye.
This program is proudly sponsored by DT's Hotel, where every colour of the rainbow drinks, corner of Hyatt and Church Streets, Richmond. <laughs>